Imagine being 2,000 miles from home and getting catapulted into a full-blown DMT breakthrough. You astral project into some sort of portal of mind-bending geometry which sends you spiraling backwards through time itself. And just when you think it's over, you wake up all the way back at home on the wrong side of the country. And here's the craziest part. You haven't actually swallowed a single pill, dropped a single tab, or smoked anything. My name is Jake, and I usually talk about my experiences with those things, like LSD or mushrooms, but today, I need to hear what you guys think about my 90 minutes inside of a sensory deprivation tank, because it makes no logical sense. I was completely sober in there, but the only word that fits what I'm about to tell you is psychedelic. And it's probably not what you think, so let's talk about the tank. The basic concept is a completely enclosed, oversized bathtub filled with highly concentrated salt water. You float weightlessly on the surface in pitch black silence. The water and air inside are kept at skin temperature, sort of blurring the boundaries of your own body. These tanks were designed to create a space that starves your brain of sensory input, freeing it to access its own, or perhaps access sensations from beyond. That was what I wanted to know. I would hear about these experiences and they sounded so psychedelic. People reported these colorful fractal patterns and really vivid hallucinations from purely floating in a tank. Obviously, I wanted to try it, but honestly, I was pretty skeptical. Not only is it a very tall order for something to rival a psychedelic experience, but also Meditation is pretty hard. I'm not the most disciplined person in the world, and having the willpower to lay completely still for an hour or more without accidentally napping or having my mind wander, getting restless, it, it just seemed so daunting, let alone scheduling in advance, paying to be there, and being sober for it. That was a lot of variables at play to guarantee success. It felt like a lot of pressure, which is why what happened in there absolutely blew my mind. Now the problem was, none of those tanks actually existed near me. I was so frustrated because it felt like being a child again, kind of left out of the cool kids club. I would listen to these podcasts where essentially these really wealthy people would talk about doing all this insane, cool shit with their friends, but then in real life, it never works out that way. I, I had the hardest time even finding psychedelics let alone another person who wanted to explore high doses of them with me. I can't just fly away to an ayahuasca retreat, and I don't have a friend who has a brand new sensory deprivation tank. So just when I really started to lose hope and thought I'd be stuck doing sensory deprivation vicariously through fucking Joe Rogan, there was a glimmer of hope. I was going to be moving to Texas. I signed a quick four week contract working in El Paso. Not only was this completely across the country, but it was also a way bigger city than where I was living. So I was hopeful. Maybe there I would have better luck at finding a real tank. The position was night shift and had mandatory overtime. So as you can imagine, I didn't really have downtime while I was there, but I was so determined that I was going to find a float tank before I left that state. Thankfully, I did. I found the Desert Float Center. This wonderful place has one of those futuristic pod style tanks, which is the exact kind that I could not find before. They also had late night sessions available, which was perfect so that I could fully sleep after work and hopefully decrease my chances of accidentally falling asleep inside of the tank. So with everything finally looking promising to put this all to the test, I clicked yes to a 90 minute session for my next day off. Now, the next biggest concern was 90 minutes going to be long enough for something actually cool to happen. I wasn't sure, but I was about to find out. So I get inside, I close the lid, and I turn off the little light. It is immediately completely overwhelming and very claustrophobic, which surprises me. I'm not scared of the dark or claustrophobic. In fact, I usually like little cozy spaces, but for whatever reason, the intensity of this level of sensory deprivation hit me way harder than I expected. I, I tried calming down by practicing some mindful meditation techniques where I really just focused on the pattern of my own breathing. As I settled down with this, I also started to fall into the sensations of weightlessness in the tank. It felt incredible. As time passed more and more, it just became more and more relaxing. And with that, 
the sensory perception of my limbs started to fade away. It was difficult to understand the positioning of my own body in relation to itself. As I'm meditating in this state, more time passes and I start having intrusive thoughts now. What happens if there's a fire? Could I die in here? It's so sealed tightly in there, I would never be able to tell in time and I would just boil alive. Would people from the spa come save me? I, I started panicking, having all these racing thoughts, imagining every horrible scenario and every logical reason why I should get out of the tank right now. And that was when my mind turned down an even worse rabbit hole, self-criticism. There I was, completely wasting my one shot in the sensory deprivation tank. I was so close to finally knowing firsthand what I could only ever hear about for so long, but I couldn't even get over my own doubt and anxiety. The only way that I had any shot at having a psychedelic encounter in there was if I could get to this place of complete calm. I knew that, but knowing that made me more anxious. It seemed more and more unlikely that I was gonna have any success with this at all. I laid there lost in time, just reflecting on how lame I am, I guess, and cycling through emotions. Eventually, thankfully, I circled back to determination again. Yeah, this was my one shot at the tank. I wasn't gonna waste it. I wasn't gonna just tap out out of fear. Ultimately, I accepted the ridiculous notion that yeah, there's a potential that I could die in a fire. And I pushed right through that anxiety and kept going. Eventually, after what feels like forever, I actually start having hallucinations. I start seeing things come at me from the dark. And it was psychedelic. Without a doubt, it was psychedelic. There were these intricate patterns and geometrical shapes, things that I had definitely seen on past mushroom trips and LSD trips. Those things were appearing in sensory deprivation. As I'm focusing on all of this, all of a sudden, everything shatters away. And to my horror, this terrifying red face comes zooming at me from the darkness. It was so big that it took up my entire view. I couldn't look at anything else but this thing. And I was staring directly into its eyes. At this point, I still had my eyes closed because that's normally how I meditate. And instinctually, I pop them open in fear, trying to escape that whatever the hell. And I realize to my further horror, it makes zero difference. He's there, open or closed. And he's floating in my way, blocking the exit to the tank. So at this point, there's no way in hell I'm leaning forwards, trying to escape. My only option is to just focus again as hard as I can on my own breathing and stare right back. Not in a threatening way or even in a defensive way, but it was really just like I was meeting whatever challenge was in store. I was determined to show no fear and to prove that I was its equal. After what felt like an eternity of this, the face simply disappeared. It was gone and I was left floating alone again in the void of the tank. Now, that probably sounds like the crazy part of my story, but it's not. What happened next is the most confusing part. Just when I thought things couldn't get any more intense than they just were, something physically yanks me from my body inside the tank. I astral projected through this DMT-like portal made of indescribable geometry. And the next thing I knew, I woke up. And I don't mean that I woke up from a nap in the tank or that I blacked out and woke up later that night. I woke up 2,000 miles away and approximately 25 years ago? You know that feeling of when you first wake up and it's almost like you're in between here and your dream world? It feels like the memories of that alternate reality are sort of mixing around with your real memories. And as you wake up, you can, you can kind of sort through what's real. But if you want to go back to that dream that you were just experiencing, you can sort of hold on to their memories as you fall back asleep, and then sometimes you can return and finish out the dream. Well, I woke up in that dreamlike state, but as a five-year-old kid again. I was back in my old bed in my childhood home, all the way on the East Coast. And from that perspective, I just had the weirdest fucking dream of my entire life about memories of the future and traveling to Texas, something called sensory deprivation. 
none of it comprehensible, but all super intriguing, swirling around my sleepy little head. And I wanted to know what that dream was all about. So I rolled back over trying to get back there. And I wake up once again, back in the void of the sensory deprivation tank. From there, it took me an eternity to start to regain memories of this reality. And it truly, in that moment, felt like a psychedelic ego death. Coming back was weird. The rest of the time in the tank, I just floated around confused, not really sure what to believe, just trying to process that experience and the implications that come with it. So did my 90 minutes sober in the tank end up being a psychedelic experience? I don't know, dude. That was some of the weirdest shit I've ever been through in my life. And I can't even blame it on drugs, but it all seems to be connected. All of these experiences in altered states of consciousness, whether through substances or otherwise, seem to have the same properties. No matter how far I get in trying to connect all of those dots, I always come back to the same question. What else don't I know?